Okay, we'll start with this. We now know who Mary Spencer will be facing early next month on the 9th, which is a Friday, over there at the Montreal Casino in Montreal, Quebec. She's going to be facing former world title challenger Cynthia Lozano. You might be familiar with that name. That's the same Cynthia Lozano that took on former IBF champion Marie-Yves D. Kerr in what was a fight for the newly vacated IBF title. That wasn't even that long ago. And I have no issues with the fight, no complaints. If Cynthia Lozano was good enough for a former champion, she's good enough for an unbeaten up-and-comer, an unbeaten prospect like Mary Spencer. But I will say, she's not Mary Spencer's league by any stretch of the imagination. Cynthia Lozano is a fighter whose record is quite deceiving. She's got a professional record of nine wins and one loss, just one loss. And seven knockouts. But those are nine wins and seven knockouts over the most pedestrian of pedestrian-level opponents, as Cynthia Lozano has herself is a pedestrian level opponent. This is a fighter that isn't put together in any way. Think Miranda Atkins and her record ahead of the Senecia Estrada fight. She was an unbeaten fighter going into that fight and on paper looked good enough, but when you saw her in action, when you saw the reality of that fight seconds into it as she was stopped, you saw that it was a padded record, that it was just a lot of fluff and this fighter has close to no ability. Very similar sentiments when it comes to Cynthia Lozano, who was stopped, quote unquote stopped by Marie Eve Decare, the former champion, when they fought. That is Cynthia Lozano's lone defeat. That was a funny looking stoppage, as I recall. That's Marie Eve Decare's only recorded knockout. Marie Eve Decare is no knockout merchant. Far from it. Now, Cynthia is going to be taking on Mary Spencer. Mary Spencer, who saw action four times this year, four times already. Having debuted as a professional in August of last year. She's been quite busy. She's already fought four times just this year, this year alone, and this will be her fifth fight. She's coming off that first round knockout over former champion Chris Namis, who she stopped in the first round. I think she's going to stop Cynthia Lozano. I think Cynthia Lozano offers up too much for a skilled and educated boxer hard puncher like Mary Spencer to exploit. Yeah, Cynthia's methodology is something akin to putting an octopus in a washing machine. Believe me when I tell you, this is not a put-together fighter by any stretch of the imagination. Shows almost no athletic ability and methodology seems to be just flailing those arms about as she comes forward. Swinging for the fences and hoping for the best. Sent him out to throwing shit at a wall and hoping something sticks. Pretty bad. But you will notice that there are two lesser alphabet titles on the line in this fight. Two lesser alphabet titles for the winner, which I think is going to be Mary Spencer. There's a WBA title and a WBC title. And what that essentially means is that the winner of the fight, which I think is going to be Mary Spencer, they come that much closer to either fighting for the WBA title or the WBC title, i.e., Mary Spencer is inching closer towards facing the winner of Rankin versus Harper and Jonas versus Bergul. That's essentially what that means, because I think she's going to knock Cynthia Lozano out. I think Mary's going to knock her block off. I think she's going to make it look easy. And it won't be a funny-looking knockout, quote-unquote. It won't be a funny-looking stoppage. It'll be a Colt knockout, a clean knockout, like the Chris Namis knockout was. I told you, in spite of Mary Spencer's age, her not being a spring chicken, you know, she's 37 years old, she's not getting any younger. I told you, given her talent level and her physical dimensions, her ability coupled with her physicality, she could very soon become the most dominant force in this division, in spite of being 37 years old. Mary Spencer comes from an excellent amateur background. She's been in there with a lot of familiar faces in the amateur ranks. And she is set to put the squeeze on some more familiar faces here in the pro ranks, in the pro league. I know it might sound presumptuous right now. I know it's still early. But Mary Spencer could very soon become this division's apex predator. Sporting a professional record of six wins, no losses, and no draws, four knockouts. Given her size, her height, her punching power, her sharpness. In spite of being 37 years old, she's a hell of a lot sharper than most of what you find in today's junior middleweight division. Mary Spencer is a legitimate and credible threat to any titleist at this weight. Career is handled by Brian Cohen and she is managed by Eye of the Tiger Management, a well-to-do outfit up there in Canada, north of the border. Yeah, it's early. Might be presumptuous, and I understand that, but Mary Spencer has the look of the most dangerous woman at 154 pounds right now. Look for the ring return of Canada Zone, Mary Spencer, early next month on the 9th. She knocks Cynthia Lozano's block off. Hey, what? Where is he back from? Ain't nobody back. Ain't nobody went nowhere. Ain't nobody fought in no war. 
Ain't nobody oh. did none of that. He did. Oh. Ain't nobody did none of that. Oh. Ain't nobody did no. Listen, because why? I'm, why I'm telling you this? Is why I'm telling you, the war is still going on. The war is not over with, Black. We know Lomachenko ducked Devin Haney before. He went and requested to become franchise champion. Only people who do that is ducks. Now, he still could have fought Devin Haney, and he waited until the coast was clear to come back when it's safe. Listen, listen. And we're going to put hands and feet on white Jesus whenever you, whenever, whenever the time comes, Black. Hey. Lomachenko. Seems that Bill Haney, the father and trainer, handler of young Devin Haney, the lightweight division's undisputed champion, very recently met with some content creators and had some not so nice things to say about the former unified lightweight champion, Vasil Lomachenko, questioning his involvement, if any involvement at all, in the war, Ukraine. He called him white Jesus. Sad about. Near as I can tell, Devin Haney owes Vasil Lomachenko a debt of gratitude because had it not been for Vasil Lomachenko going back to Ukraine in the thick of the Russian invasion. Did you forget that originally it was supposed to be Vasil Lomachenko versus George Kambosos in Australia, not Devin Haney? Devin only got the shot after Vasil Lomachenko withdrew when he made that decision to return to his native Ukraine, which was in crisis. Devin did what he had to do, made the necessary concessions, made the necessary sacrifices, but he only got Got the opportunity to do any of that these comments from bill haney these content creators are getting an adverse reaction in some circles seems a bit classless of bill haney to use the war in ukraine and vasil lomachenko's involvement or the lack thereof as ammunition for a smear campaign a needless smear campaign you don't need to bump your gums to sell that fight what's this all about so lomachenko's not running any smear campaigns in reference to use two guys he's not bumping his gums like you guys are bumping your gums that's fine it's the hurt business now he's a paying customer want to see these two guys hurt each other anyway and that brings me to my point bob arum has declared that his goal is to make devin haney versus Vasil Lomachenko for Haney's undisputed lightweight world titles. If Haney beats George Kambosos Jr. in their October 15th rematch and Loma wins his return bout, reported to be versus Jermaine Ortiz on October 29th, provided both fighters make it through their next fights. They're supposed to fight each other. That's what Bob wants. That's what I want. Talk your shit now. Talk shit while you still can. But I just hope that you're not talking all this shit so that you can turn tail when the time comes. I hope we actually get a fight out of this. You heard one of the content creators say that Vasil Lomachenko ducked Devin Haney. That in petitioning for franchise status, he circumvented that fight. There's some truth to that, but it's only a half-truth. Yes. It's true. Fighting Devin Haney was not a priority to Vasil Lomachenko, it was not a priority for Bob Arum at the time because they were already in the process of building the Teofimo Lopez fight. Bob Arum knew that as Vasil Lomachenko's mandatory challenger, Eddie Hearn was gonna push for a purse bid. Push for a purse bid situation where both promotional outfits could place a bid for the fight at which point Eddie Hearn would aspire to bring Vasil Lomachenko over to DAZN. He tried that with Anthony Krola and it didn't work out. Bob Arum paid. Bob Arum gave Anthony Krola a little extra money off the top to ensure that both teams reach a deal and that the fight didn't end up going to a purse bid. And he circumvented a purse bid that time, but he knew Eddie Hearn was dead set on trying it again, only this time he'd try it with Devin Haney. Which would have been an even more expensive situation for Bob. At which point, People over there at top rank decided to petition for franchise status and franchise champions, at least at that time, they didn't have mandatories. So, no mandatories, no purse bids, no problem. They were able to proceed as planned and do that Teofimo Lopez fight. Uninterrupted, which is more or less what this was really all about, that and not allowing Eddie Hearn to poach one of his fighters, have them fight on the DAZN platform. So Lomachenko became the WBC champion in August of 2019 when he beat Luke Campbell for the newly vacated title. The plan was to match him against the winner of Comey versus Lopez. So he won the title in August of 2019. Devin Haney became his mandatory challenger the following month in September. Devin returned to action in November against then unbeaten Alfredo Santiago. And after the Santiago fight, he underwent shoulder surgery. After that shoulder surgery in late 2019, 
2018. He was set to sit out for approximately six months in recovery of said surgery, though Devin Haney himself didn't actually return to action until a full year later in late 2020. So what exactly was he going to fight for Solo Machenko? You had shoulder surgery in late 2019. You weren't set to come back for at least six months, so it actually took you 12 months to return. The pandemic had already started, and as you could imagine, that affected the sport. But Solo Machenko was proceeding as planned with the unification match. The unification match with the winner of Come versus Lopez, which turned out to be Teofimo Lopez, that fight took place in late 2019. And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the fight between Solo Machenko and Teofimo Lopez didn't take place till late 2020. It was delayed. It was affected. A lot of people don't tell the whole story. They only tell you half the story because it suits their narrative. If Vasil Lomachenko didn't fight the winner of Come versus Lopez, which ended up being Lopez, they would have accused him of ducking that guy. They would have accused him of ducking Lopez. But he actually fought Lopez, which was the original plan. He fought Lopez, so what they do is they accuse him of ducking Devin. He's one of these guys that just can't win with some people. And you try explaining all of that to these dumb dullards who have the attention span of the common house fly. A few seconds before their eyes start to glaze over. Yes, Top Rank did petition for franchise status, but it's because their focus was making the Loma versus Lopez fight. They knew they were going to match Teofimo Lopez against Richard Comey. Most people expected that Teofimo Lopez would win, myself included, and the winner of the fight would go into a Vasil Lomachenko fight. That was the plan. But a lot of people like to be intellectually dishonest when it comes to this stuff, so it just is what it is. As stated, I hope that Bill Haney isn't just making the rounds and running this smear campaign, bumping his gums for no reason. I hope he's bumping his gums and we actually get a fight out of it so you can let those two boys settle up with each other in the ring. Put the narrative to rest. Put the narrative to bed. The stage is already set. Beat George for a second time. Then you can fight in a big money fight with Vasil Lomachenko. Maybe they do it at Madison Square Garden. Maybe they bill it as a pay-per-view. Maybe you get paid more money for that fight than what you've been making fighting George Kambosos. Maybe. So that maybe you can finally beat that guy. Or maybe that guy can finally beat you. I don't really think the smear campaign Bill Haney's running is necessary. That's just me. There's a separate situation involving the Haney's, Devin Haney, reigning undisputed lightweight champion Devin Haney, who's miffed with the people over there at Ring Magazine. He said the Ring Magazine could keep their belt. You won't see me with it before or after this fight. To which Dougie Fisher of Ring Magazine replied, then mail it back to us, champ. Ouch. He talked about this, how Devin Haney is quite disgruntled that he was left out of Ring Magazine's latest pound-for-pound -pound updates. On the Ring Magazine pound-for-pound -pound list, you will find the name of former champion Vasil Lomachenko, but you won't find the name of reigning undisputed and Ring Magazine champion, Devin Haney. Devin, who stated, to be clear, not obligated to wear the Ring Magazine belt. If I earned it, then I earned it, whether I wear it or not. So to ask for it back just shows y'all never wanted me to have it in the first place. Devin is frustrated, and I understand why. Feels like he's not getting the professional accolades and praise that he deserves. But he was the one who said he's not going to wear the Ring Magazine belt anymore beyond this upcoming George Cambosos rematch. That was a proposition that he made. What are you expecting these guys to do? You're expecting that Dougie Fisher should get on his knees and beg you to keep it? You think that Michael Montero is going to go cry in the shower about it? He's not. You want to chuck the belt? Chuck the belt. You're the one that said you're not going to wear it anymore. And you announced that to the world by way of your social media where all of your followers are following you. Which makes this an announcement. An announcement that Ring Magazine's Douglas Fisher was privy to. It is what it is. I understand Devin's frustration. I mean, I really do. I get it. The sacrifices that he made, the concessions in order to even become this division's undisputed and Ring Magazine champion. You would hope that the pundits who chronicle this sport would dispense the praise adequately and evenly. And for Devin, he feels slighted. He feels snubbed that he was kept out of Ring Magazine's pound-for-pound -pound list. We often talk about how these lists are basically just popularity contests, not actual measures of skill. They're not. The list's pecking order is basically determined 
by a panel of votes and a tally of those votes. That's what determines who even gets on the list. So it's not actually a barometer for skill. I mean, think about it. They've got Errol Spence Jr. at number four and Canelo Alvarez at number five. You're telling me that Errol Spence Jr. has exhibited more skill than Canelo. Canelo Alvarez has been a full-fledged champion at four weights. He's currently a reigning undisputed champion. It's taken him less time to achieve that goal than it's taken Errol Spence, who's been saying it's strap season for something like five or six years. Melo Alvarez became an undisputed champion in about 12 months. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on somebody else's pound for pound list. I keep my own with its own consistent unit of measure and its metrics. The real issue here, the implication, this doesn't send a good message. You often hear it said that what fight fans want are consolidation fights and unification matches, champions versus champions, the best versus the best, undisputed champions, so on and so forth. And when Devin Haney does what he has to do in order to achieve this goal, he still doesn't get a rank on the pound for pound list. Now, I understand the argument that's levied against Devin. That Devin Haney is an undisputed champion, but his undisputed run was nowhere as near as difficult or arduous as Alexander Usyk's undisputed run or, or Josh Taylor's or Terence Crawford's. Those guys had to fight two and three champions along the way, whereas Devin, Devin only really had to fight one guy, just one guy, in order to become an undisputed champion. And that one guy is the only champion that he's ever fought. So I understand what people mean when they say that his undisputed run was somewhat weaker than some other fighters, some other champions. Weaker than Canelo's, weaker than Usyk's, weaker than Josh Taylor's, weaker even than Terence Crawford. I get it. But it's still noteworthy that him being as young as he is, he has achieved that. And that... It just looks weird that Vasil Lomachenko's on there at number six and Devin, Devin doesn't even get mentioned. And Devin actually has what Vasil Lomachenko wants. So Lomachenko's wanted to become an undisputed champion for a very long time. Well, that's what Devin Haney is, and he doesn't even get mentioned. I guess the implication here is that it can leave a fighter feeling disillusioned when they don't get the praise they feel they deserve for the accolades and accomplishments they've amassed so far. They might start telling themselves, well, why go undisputed at all? If I do, you're not going to give me any credit anyway. And that's the problem that I have with all of this. That is the implication of this ongoing going situation. It's bad optics.